Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, what is a double drop tea session? In this video, we're gonna show you how we like to get funky and mix things up with double drop tea sessions. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then make sure you hit it with a like, and if you're not following us on all of our socials, then go click those buttons. There is nothing more enjoyable in my opinion, than having an expansive session with a single tea, really getting to know that tea, really getting to know how you personally feel about it and building that relationship with a tea. Sometimes the sessions get a bit longer and you might introduce another tea into the session before the first tea has run its course. And this happens oftentimes whenever we're doing a tea session, it happens oftentimes whenever we are sitting with farmers drinking their tea too. So you have a tea that you've been drinking, maybe you've had five, six infusions, and then you just wanna bring another one into the mix. You're starting to taste that one and you might go back to the first one. Sometimes that even becomes three teas, four teas, et cetera. And we've noticed that sometimes it's really enjoyable when you have this interplay between a couple of different teas where you're sipping on one infusion of one tea and then you're going to another tea and that combination or that interplay between those teas can be really enjoyable and add another level to the Gong Fu session. So oftentimes, especially when it's gonna be a long night, it's Friday night in London, so tonight is one of those nights. We like to think in advance and choose a couple of teas that we want to bring together into one session called the double drop session. So what we're trying to achieve here is selecting a couple of teas that you want to drink where their footprint of flavors sort of overlap and you know that Drinking them side by side, back to back, if you'd like, really gives another dimension to your tasting. It just makes the tasting session even more expansive. And I have to say, this is really suited once you've gotten to know a tea. So I would always advise that you sit down and explore a single tea by itself. Do that first, do that a few times. But once you get to know these teas, you can start to play around, have some fun, start to combine different teas together so you can have this back-to-back -back tasting. And during the double drop session, you can also mix the teas together and I'll show you how we go about doing that. It's important to note that this is very different from a horizontal tea tasting. With a horizontal tea tasting, you're tasting usually sort of the same tea, um, but from different suppliers or different years, and you're trying to understand some of the theories of how processing or cultivar or season or supplier differs between the tea, so you're tasting in a comparative tasting. That's very different to what we're doing here, where we're actually wanting this sort of interplay between the teas. Also, this is different from tea blending, in which you're taking teas and mixing them together to create a fixed blend, a fixed flavor profile. Sometimes you add herbs, sometimes you add flowers. Stay away from the artificially scented blends out there. But that is a separate process where you're trying to formulate one blend that is meant to be brewed together and has a particular fixed flavor profile. With double drop sessions, this is all about fun. It's all about play. It's all about mixing it up, changing the proportions, tasting the tea separately and in combination. And as I say, really appreciating how one tea starts to define the other through tasting back to back. So where does the term double drop come from? Well, actually it's a term which is used in club culture, but we at Mayleaf have taken it to describe these type of tea sessions. I used to be a DJ as well as a music producer. I've done videos before about my analogy between music production and the brewing process. And with these double drop sessions, I like to think of them as DJ sets. The whole skill or one of the main skills of a good DJ is selecting selecting one record and finding records which then would blend and cross over into the previous one so that you get this beautiful dynamic journey from one piece of music to another. So you're looking for pieces of music that have enough crossover in terms of tone, in terms of energy, but enough contrast to create that dynamism and that journey for the audience. And double drop in DJ terminology is when you mix two records together so that the two, uh, the drops in the music, a drop means when the 
beat goes down and you get this, this sort of little break where there's no uh, beat and then the beat comes back in, which builds that anticipation. And when you get two records that match perfectly so that they drop at the same time and they come back at the same time, that is called a double drop. It's often used in drum and bass DJ circles, but I'm sure other music club cultures will use it as well. There's also a more cheeky meaning for the term double drop, which is also part of club culture. I'll let you look that up if you're interested. So I like to think of these double drop sessions in the same way as a DJ set. You're taking one piece of music, one tea, you're enjoying it, you're experiencing it, and then you're trying to find another piece of music or another tea which is gonna contrast with it and complement it. So you're essentially pairing a tea with a tea. And then you've got that unique mix. If you want to do it, you can mix the two teas together and that is very similar like when you are DJing in the mix, you're mixing the two records together and hopefully you're creating a sound which is very harmonious, a third sound which is very unique. You can't ever experience them separately. It is only about combining those two records together that you get this harmonious third sound and that happens hopefully in good double drop sessions. Right, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna demonstrate how we do a double drop session and I'm gonna be showing you three double drop combinations that I particularly love. So what do you need for a double drop session? Well, of course, you need two T's. How do you select those T's? Have fun, experiment, play around. Sometimes two T's that you would never think would work together do work together in a double drop session. But obviously you're looking for some sort of crossover in flavor. So you're looking for sort of a matching of some flavor profiles, but enough contrast, enough difference so that you're sort of expanding the amount of flavors that you are tasting. So taste one tea, think about what you would like added to it and find teas that have similar uh, flavor profiles, but add those extra elements. A great way of doing it, if you look on our website, you'll see that for every tea, we have a, a flavor wheel that has a sort of chart showing you the general flavor profile of a tea. Look for teas that have similarities, that those footprints sort of match, but again, just widen it out so you're getting a little bit more of an expansive experience. So select your teas, have fun, experiment, Worst case scenario, you just drink the tea separately. It's not a big deal at all. Okay, so you need your two teas. You then need a couple of brewing vessels. We are using our mini guy ones here. These are fresh in stock. You asked for them, so we got them in for you. These are great because you can make rich, flavorful Gong Fu brews without using a lot of leaf. So they're perfect for solo brewing. I love to pull these out and just brew directly into the cup. You don't need a gong dao bei because you're pouring all of the liquor into the cup. So great for solo brewing. But also if you know that you're gonna be tasting a lot of different teas in a horizontal tasting or a couple of teas in a double drop session and you don't have lots of people, it's a great way to be very efficient with your leaves but really get full flavor behavior. Obviously, if we had more people, like three, four people, I would upgrade this to larger guy ones and I would probably only have one cup per person but since we're doing this in a little bit more of a formal setting I'm gonna have a cup for one tea, a cup for another and a cup for our in the mix tea. Okay so we have here Naked Spring aka Kai Hua Longding. This is a Zhejiang Green tea, really, really bright, really, really fresh. It's called Naked Spring for a reason. Very, very uh, lively, bright springtime flavors. Things like star fruit, green woods, a um, little bit zesty, gorgeous tea. And here we've got Jasmine Jade, which is a Fujianese Huangdan Tieguanyin, which has been scented with jasmine. So why have I picked these two teas? Well, I think that this is all about those bright, zesty, fresh notes and um, has a slight astringency and a dry puckering physicality to it. And this one here is sweet and smooth and a little bit more creamy. And they have enough crossover in their greenness, yet this is gonna hopefully bring out a little bit more of the creaminess in the session and this is gonna bring out that physicality and that brightness. So what do we do? Well, we're gonna rinse these leaves. 
I will quickly show them to the camera so you can see them up close and personal. There's your Kaihua Long Ding and your Jasmine Jade. Obviously, we're going to do a full Gong Fu style um, appreciation of these teas. I'm going to rush it a little bit here so you can see what we would normally do for a double drop, but I am going to rinse the leaves. This is boiling water. One thing you've got to try to remember to do is brew the teas as they are meant to be brewed. Don't, you know, if you've got two teas that have different water temperatures, then pay that little bit of extra attention. So I'm just going to cool down the water here in this Gong Dao Bay. I might pour it in another one just to cool it down a little bit more and then pour it just on the rim again, just so that the teaware takes some of the heat. And we are going to give this one a rinse. And then first real appreciation, obviously you can do the smell of the dry leaf, but smell of wet leaf separately. Oh, I'm getting some green grapes. I'm getting that bamboo, that green bamboo, a little nuttiness, a soya milk nuttiness. So nut milks and a zesty tang, almost like juice, like a, a lemon juice. Very, very bright, very, very zesty. Let's smell the jasmine jade. Obviously bags and bags of jasmine, which I always somehow associate with strawberry jam, real, real rich, unctuous strawberry conserve. Very, very concentrated, a little bit of lilies and orchids, very, very floral. But then there is a distinct creaminess, a little bit of a toffee note going on there as well. Yeah, biscuity note going on there as well. Okay, so one of the great things with the double drop session is seeing how they'll mix in your nose. And that is simply a matter of bringing them together. And you can start to get a feel for which tea is dominant. Oh. And you can start to imagine how they're going to combine. So the jasmine is obviously stronger in terms of its aroma, which is why I pull it back a little bit. And I'm just trying to find that balance, which is going to inform a lot in terms of how I might mix these teas. Oh, but the combination is great because the green tea has all of those bright grassy green notes, those bamboo notes, and then you get sort of a pineapple sweetness that starts to develop as you combine them together. So that jasmine combined with the green note, that fresh zesty note, makes a real, this distinct pineapple juice when I combine these together. Really, really lovely combination. So let's brew up Let's give the Naked Spring a taste and then we'll be tasting the Jasmine. So in double drop sessions, what I like to do is focus on one tea. Normally I would do just one infusion of one tea, taste it, get to know it, remember it, enjoy it. Maybe then do one or two infusions with the other and then the merging or the mixing can begin. But we're going to jump straight in. Mm. Physicality is the first thing that I notice. Very dry and puckering too sweet and juicy. But then it goes to a very juicy note afterwards. I'm getting star fruit, fresh linen, green bamboo, um, a little bit of an apple note coming through, a little bit of um, a guava note coming through, a little bit of a tropical note coming through as well. It's not just about those fresh green meadows. But the physicality on this tea is what I love about it. Really sets your tongue off. It's like, it just puckers up and gives you this very bright astringency, which I love so much. Let's taste the Jasmine Jade. I'll try and ignore the uh, blend that's gonna be happening in my mouth, although that's gonna be very, very difficult. In fact, very, very difficult indeed. So what happens is because your mouth has now become accustomed to this very green note, the contrast is more pronounced. I start to really pick up the creaminess of this oolong tea. This is a Huangdan cultivar, which is more on the sort of creamier, um, 
sweeter notes than your um, Tie Guan Yin varieties in Tie Guan Yin. Your Guan Yin varieties are very, very uh, um, flower forwards and a little bit more starchy. This is a bit more sweet and creamy. Jasmine, obviously, I'm getting those jammy notes. I'm getting those biscuity shortbread biscuit notes as well. Right, now that that has settled in my uh, mouth, let's move back to the Naked Spring, which is even more bright, even more of those green bamboo notes. Back to this one. Oh, the sweetness that this is starting to lay down in my mouth is amazing. Oh, milky, creamy, nutty, but those bright green notes are there as well. Specifically, a green uh, smell that comes from smelling tomatoes that have been ripened on the vine. If you get tomatoes that still have the vine and you pluck the vine off and you just smell where the vine is connected to the tomato, it's, it's, it's got a very particular um, aroma. So it's got those sorts of aromas. Now, the mix. Normally, as I said, I would take my time, I would enjoy this interplay, but we're going to show you another two uh, double drops that I like to do. So we're going to move directly into the mix. Now, when mixing this, uh, these teas, what you are looking to do is you are looking to start off with giving more proportion to the lighter tea. So in this case, because I know this is very, this one here is very rich in its jasmine aroma, I don't want too much. I just want to add, say, about 20% compared to 80% of the Naked Spring. Cheers, everybody. In the mix. You see, what you have now is I'm still picking up, obviously, the jasmine note, but I have tailored the tea exactly as I want. One of the great things about the double drop sessions allows you to tailor your teas because when you have a jasmine green tea, sometimes it's overly jasminey for you and then you can't do anything about it. It's already been blended. With this, you can control the amount of jasmine scent you want to bring to this green tea. This is perfect for me because what I'm getting here I'm still getting this bright green physical puckering nature, but it has been tempered. It's a little bit smoother. It's a little bit creamier. And those jasmine strawberry notes combine with it to get a real, once again, I'm getting a real pineapple um, combo here. So Naked Spring plus Jasmine Jade equals pineapple juice. It's a great, great combination. A perfect double drop especially if you're looking for a bright, uplifting double drop session. So there you go, Naked Spring, Jasmine Jade. I would love to keep going, but we're gonna move on to our second double drop session, and that is Empress Oolong and Fire Phoenix Pua. So we've got Empress Oolong, which is a Yen Cha, the original Da Hong Pao, made from the proper cultivar, the Qi Dun variety. I've done a whole video. If you want to understand more about Da Hong Pao, I'll put a link in the description below. And we've got a 10, now nearly 11 year old cooked pu'er called Fire Phoenix. This is one of my most favorite double drops is a Yen Cha with a cooked pu'er. We're going to give them a rinse quickly. Really excited about this one. So rinse the Da Hong Pao, Emperor Sulong already, the smell coming off here. Tons and tons of red fruit, a bit of cream coming through here. I'm getting that roasty, toasty note, but that is not dominating. Instead, what is dominating is the bright cranberry notes, the red fruits, the soaked wood, <sighs> mouth watering. And now, Fire Phoenix, a classic, classic cooked pu'er from the Da Ye Jong variety, made, processed in 2008. Let's pour these away and let's smell these wet leaves. The aromas coming off these leaves 
already are amazing. And this is what's so great about these double drop sessions is that it just, it's just, it adds so much more to the session because there's mixing going on in these aromas already under my nose. Cranberry, lots of that, red currants. Mangosteen, that sort of tropical fruit, creamy, white flesh, creamy tropical fruits. And here we've got intense, cavernous, humid, wet rocks, a little bit of a Hong Kong herbal shop smell. Again, woods, but the woods are not wet. Instead, they're dry and they're antique. Now the combo, the double drop combo. Oh, this for me is such an amazing smell. You're getting the funk, the cellar-like qualities, that dry antique wood with a bit of leather, a little bit of chocolate and cocoa notes coming through. And then this brightens it up. Suddenly I'm getting mangosteens and fruits. I'm getting the wood is almost like wood that's been soaked in cranberry juice. Oh, really, really making my mouth water. This is a really juicy combination. Take your time when you're doing this. Make sure you brewing them properly. Right, let's pour this one away, both using boiling water so we don't have to worry about cooling down the water. Here we go. Make sure you get every last drop of this Fire Phoenix because those last drops are gonna be even stronger. You'll see the liquor go from sort of a, a, a lighter red to a darker one. Okay, here we go. Let's give the Empress a taste. As I said, if you've not seen a video about this tea, go check out that video after this one. And what I love about the Chidan variety is the purity of that Chidan variety. It really is expressive of those top notes. I'm getting a little bit of mangosteen with, I would say, a tiny bit of a licorice sweetness to it, a little bit of shoe polish note coming through as well. So some of those sort of varnish notes, cherries, dry cherries, dried cranberries. Then we move to back to back from one record to the next into the Fire Phoenix. The smell coming of this is really cleansing. It really has a bracing note to it, almost savory note coming through. A little bit of a celery spiciness, some sort of freshly um, shaven pencils, that, wood, that dried wood note, antique wood, a little bit of leather. So you can see how the crossover is gonna join. You've got the leather and the varnish. You've got those dry woods and the wet woods. Right, now let's, let's see how that flavor profile on my tongue with that dry texture is gonna affect back-to-back -back this tea. Whoa, so the brighter notes are accentuated. Again, revealing or expressing notes in a tea or um, emphasizing notes in a tea because of the contrast. Now, combo time. I would say that this is a sort of 50-50 mix for me because they both are powerful teas, they both can hold their own, but play around with this, right? I am intentionally rushing through this a little bit because I wanna get through a couple of, a few of these um, double drop combinations. Cheers, everybody. The double drop, Fire Phoenix, X Empress Oolong. A 50-50 mix, one of my favorite double drop combinations. I think that these two footprints work super well together. I get everything, it's like an expansive experience. I'm getting all of those nice deep herbal notes. I'm getting that cavernous wet rock, refreshing humid forest note coming through here but I'm getting the fruits, I'm getting those creamy notes from those mangosteens. And interestingly, a 
sort of spice and sweetness comes through. It's like the sort of cleanliness and um, quenching finish of the fire phoenix. You get that. But then afterwards, you get that rising yen yun, that vaporous quality that comes from a good yen cha. And that sort of extends the journey of the experience because you get this uh, extra stage. If you just drink this by itself, it, it, it um, doesn't have as a quenching finish as the Fire Phoenix. And so you're just kind of getting this very, very gorgeous, vaporous, um, voluminous, um, rising aroma and um, and uh, yen yun mouthfeel but with this one here added to it you get this stop and then then this return of the tea and that is really really gorgeous in terms of flavor i'm also noticing a sweetness coming through a woodsy sweetness and it is vanilla definitely i'm getting a real the combination of these two teas seems to bring out, if the last one brought out more of a pineapple finish, this one really accentuates the vanilla notes in these teas. I'm gonna do one more infusion because I think that Fire Phoenix could have had a little bit of a longer one. There you go. A little bit of a darker brew. Cheers. I think the 50-50 works here. I'm going to stick with 50-50. Maybe a little bit less of the Fire Phoenix, maybe 60-40. 60, 40. 60 the Empress Oolong, because it is a lighter tea, just. Mmm. Coffee notes coming through here. So the roast of this with the um, slight herbal nuttiness of the Fire Phoenix somehow brings out a coffee note that I hadn't picked up before. Mmm. Coffee Vanilla Mangosteen. Excellent combination. I highly, highly recommend you try this one out. If you have a Yen Cha and you have a Cooked Pua, those footprints really, really match. All right, last double drop session, and that is Superior Iron Goddess Tie Guan Yin and Young Gushu 2018. So we've got a Qing Xiang Tie Guan Yin Oolong, a green Oolong made from the Guan Yin variety, autumn picked, very high, bright aroma, full of sweet floral notes, but also has that starchy, buttery sweetness to it as well, sort of a buttery mashed potato sweetness and starchiness to it. And then you've got Young Gushu 2018, a raw Gushu Pua made from those ancient tea trees growing in Jing Mai Forest. And it may seem like a little bit of an odd combination to some, but think about it, there is a crossover here. They both have floral notes. They both have creamy notes in them. They both have some starchy notes in them. Obviously, they are very different too, so you're getting that spread. What you have here with the Tie Guan Yin is very, very upfront, lots and lots of aroma, but maybe the finish, we, we wanna add a little bit more bite and a bit more strength to that finish, which the Pua can give, and in uh, converse to that, the um, aromatics, these floral aromatics will hopefully join and mingle with these subtropical forest flower notes in the young gushu to elevate those floral notes. I have not done this particular combination before. I have done raw pu'as with sour sap and raw pu'as with our Tie Guan Yin Batch 54, which are a little bit more kind of fresh. So it's gonna be interesting to see how these very creamy notes or, or very starchy notes in this uh, Tie Guan Yin work with the Young Gushu raw pu'a. Let's get our nose into this. We already know this is gonna be a powerhouse hitter. Wow. Vanilla cream, like very, very bright vanilla cream, like um, um, creme patissiere with a honeysuckle, um, very, very sugary icing sugar. Those buttery mashed potatoes are coming through as well. I'm getting a slight tang and a slight freshness coming through. A um, little bit of green apple freshness, but it's very, very uh, much in the background, just backing up all of those sweet floral notes. Oh, such an amazing aroma. If you've never smelt 
a really high quality Qingxiang, high bright aroma Tianguan Yin, flowery face cream note coming through. But that creme patissiere, that very, very vanillary cream, like the, the inside of one of those cream puffs, very, very pronounced. Okay. Whoa. Deep, rich, but then zesty as well. So I'm getting those subtropical forests. I'm getting the, um, oh, ooh, a little spice developing, a little incense spice, some apricots, some very, very tangy apricots, like dried apricots. If you rip them open and you smell those dried apricots, very, very concentrated apricot smell. Really, really lovely. And it also has a raisiny note to it and it's got a malty note to it. So it's got those warmer notes, a little bit of those overripe bananas. So a little bit more fermented, deeper notes than this bright tea here. Right, let's brew these up. Those leaves are already busting out of this mini guy one. The joy of these mini guy ones. You don't have to use a lot of leaf. I still use a fair amount, but you don't have to use a lot and you will get some really rich tea from these tiny guy ones. Okay. A face full of flowers, loads and loads of honeysuckle, loads and loads of buttered corn, buttery mashed potato. And then the finish is clean, but with a lingering green apple, tangy, yin yun, green grape juice sort of aroma through the nose, but it's relatively clean and slightly dry. Now I know that the finish on this is going to be different and that's one of the reasons why I tend to like this combo. Mmm. Whoa. The starchiness of this tea, the sweetness of this tea really brings out and contrasts with the brightness in the young Gushu. This apricot note, really, really strong apricot note, but I'm also getting the apricot kernel, that almondy note coming through as well. So the contrast emphasizes the freshness in this tea because this is so sweet and starchy but the physicality coming through here, as you can probably see, is much more intense. It's really, really giving me that tingly sensation. It's dry to juicy. My mouth is now flooding with juiciness from that real astringent start, really long, sweet, persistent finish, both in terms of physicality and taste from the young Gushu, we're now going to see how the young Gushu has changed the way the Tie Guan Yin tastes. One more sip of this one. Just to lay down that minerality. Wow, zesty, zesty. Again, bright apricot notes coming through. Let's see what it does to this one. Mm -hmm. It really, really shows off the starchy, Slightly creamy, but very sweet note in this tea. And also I'm getting that crossover, that fresh crossover, more like aloe vera, very like, yeah, aloe vera juice, um, sort of slight sourness coming through on this one here, the Tie Guan Yin. All right, so mixing these teas, this is gonna be interesting. I don't think a 50-50 is gonna work here, but we'll see. I'm gonna. I'm going to start off with a little bit more of the Yang Gushu and just a little drop of the Tie Guan Yin because I know that these bright aromatics, just like the jasmine tea before, could dominate. <laughs> wow. If you had tasted that by itself without knowing this is a double drop session, you would say, wow, this is the most floral raw pua I've ever tasted. It's like you're taking those Jingmai floral aromatics and you're just, just absolutely EQing up those bright subtropical forest flower notes to make sort of the ultimate flowery raw pua. Let's 
try the other way around. So I'm going to just put a drop of this in. Let's see what that does. It tastes like, <laughs> it tastes like a Tieguan Yin, but the finish has a lot more bite, has a lot more strength and has a bitter to sweet transformation that you would never get out of simply a Tie Guan Yin. I'm going to try the 50-50, so 50-50 here. Cheers everyone. Mm. For me that doesn't work. That is almost like, um, it's too much of a fight in the cup. It's not allowing one tea to really show itself and then just be sort of accented by the other tea. Yeah, I would say that you stick to either saying, I'm going to make a Tie Guan Yin with more bite and more finish, or I'm going to make a raw pua, which is very, very floral. And this is the joy of the double drop sessions is that everyone gets to play, everyone gets to customize their tea. The tasting experience just becomes more expansive because you've got more information to play with. It is not a substitute for experiencing the joy of a single tea, but it definitely adds an element of entertainment to your tea tasting session. It's just a bit of fun. And by comparing and contrasting teas, by pairing one tea with another, you start to reveal certain characteristics in the tea that you may not have fully appreciated if you drank it solo style. So go to your cupboard, open it up. It also expands the amount of flavors that you can experience with your teas because these combinations are gonna be very unique. So if you've got 20 teas out there, the mathematical equation would mean that you've got nearly 200 teas that you can, double drop sessions that you can create with 20 teas. If you've got 100 teas, that's something like 5,000 different double drop sessions. So you've got suddenly, you're, you're expanding the range of flavors that you can get out of your tea selection. Go try it yourself. Please do let me know which double drop sessions you particularly enjoy in the comments section below. Let me know some suggestions so that I can try some out as well. Let me know how you get on. That's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then make sure you hit it with a like. Follow us on all of our socials so that you don't miss out on any news and videos from Mayleaf HQ. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions, comments, or video ideas, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. See ya.